So welcome to this Fearless Fundamentals video. Um, this is Brian coming to you again from Boise, Idaho. I'm at my sister's place. And in this video, I wanna talk about developing emotional sensitivity in communication, vulnerability in a sense. Uh, and I sometimes hesitate to use the word vulnerability because guys don't wanna be vulnerable, they wanna be weak. But the truth is, is that vulnerability is strength. A man that can be vulnerable but own his vulnerability what I mean by that is not play a victim to it, not wallow in it. They can handle it, can say, yeah, I, this hurt, this made me afraid, but I can handle it, I'm a man, is a very attractive and powerful man. Where vulnerability tends to go wrong is when you become needy or you wallow, you play the victim, uh, you're looking for somebody or something outside yourself as a, as a way to fix it. And as we become more powerful as men and we start learning to own our vulnerability, and this is men and women, as we, we, be, as we start to own our vulnerability, we actually become way more attractive to the opposite sex. And then the opposite sex, because we don't need them, doesn't mean we wouldn't want them or choose them. And let's put it another way. Because I'm willing to face my own stuff, if you're not gonna show up and help me, I'll find something because I, I, I know that something's gonna help me through this. I have, in a sense, faith. That's what makes you attractive. Yeah, I'm sad, but I'll work through this. I always do. You know, there's something's got my back and it just always works out. I can handle it, I'm a man. I'll step into my pain. If I have to cry a little bit, I'll cry. If I have to hurt a little bit, I hurt. If I have to, if I'm gonna go, um, go take a risk and I'm scared, you know, I'll shake, but I'll, I'll do it. I'm gonna show up anyways. That's what makes you attractive. And I'm not even gonna deny the fact that I'm scared or nervous. I won't even, maybe I wanna play the victim. And I'm like, yeah, I feel like I wanna play the victim, but I'm not gonna do it. That's what makes you sexy. And you can kind of almost hear it in the way I say it. You can hear it in the way I kind of communicate it. And it's very different than saying, yeah, that's scary. I don't know if I wanna do it. I, I'm, I, I don't think I can handle it. That's very different than, oh, it's scary, I'll do it, but you know, I'm, um, um, will you hold my hand? You know, there's, there's a difference in, in energy in that. Or that's scary, you know, I'm gonna be able to handle it and having you next to me even makes me more confident, so it's gonna be awesome. Like think about jumping out of an airplane for the first time. Dude, I'm terrified, and, but I, I can't wait to do it. I'm gonna do it. This is gonna, you're gonna grow and learn so much from this. It's a very different energy. And so that's what women are really unconsciously, they don't even realize it, looking for in a man when they say they want a sensitive guy. They don't want a sensitive, needy, new agey guy that's constantly looking for something outside of himself to fix himself. They're looking for a guy that's, that's in a sense vulnerable but self-contained. And then she wants to nurture him and take care of him and be there for him. He gets all the rewards. And that's kind of a secret to all different parts of life. The less you need money, for example, the more money chases you. You know, the less you need anything because need has this way of pushing away the very thing you want so in this case we're talking about vulnerability and let's dive in a little deeper now or let's dive in and look at it a little deeper now because i want to give you a practice to develop it one of the best things i did for myself was i started doing something i call the heart walks and i don't i would i, I kind of been reluctant to say to you guys heart walks because i don't want to sound new agey but i say heart warp because I'm really feeling this area of my body. I'm practicing developing a relationship to it. Why would I be doing that? Because that's where my sensitivity is. That's where my vulnerability is. You see, the body has all kinds of chemicals that run through it that allow us to feel sadness, happiness, joy, love, appreciation. There's thoughts, but then there's chemicals that run through the body and we feel those in the body. When you feel love for somebody, you typically feel a warmth in your chest, right? You know, when you're nervous, you might feel your throat binding. You might feel it tightening up here, or you might feel your stomach getting sick. This is all responses from feeling in the body. And so what we want to do is develop a relationship to those feelings and then learn to own them. Like, like, yeah, I'm going to walk into them and I'm going to own them just like we would any challenge as a man. Think about it. If you're going to the gym and that weight's a little heavier than you're used to, and you're going to, you're going to get out there and I'm going to you're going to state pump yourself up a little bit and you're going to own this weight. I'm going to bench press more than I ever had before. I'm going to squat more than I ever had before. You get on that football field and you see that challenge of that other team in front of you and you're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. There's a, there's a sense we love the challenge. Well, this is the same basic idea. We're going to step into our emotions and say, you know what? Bring it on. Fear, bring it on. Sadness, bring it on. And uh, you're not going to deny it. You're not going to push it down. You're going to own it. 
the other type of guy that's really unattractive to women is a guy that is obviously feeling emotions, but he's in denial. And you, I say, go approach this pretty girl over here. Go tell her, you know, she's cute. Or even just ask her the time. And they're like, no, I don't want to. I'm like, are you afraid? No, I'm perfectly fine. They're shaking. They're nervous. They're sweating. Oh, I, I'm not scared. Yeah, I'm not scared at all. I just don't want to do it. And that guy is super unattractive to women, too. Oh, I got it. I got it. I'm cool. I'm, I'm going to be confident. I can easily be confident. Oh, girls love me. This, this, you could hear it in the tone. You can hear it in the energy. And that guy is also super unattractive. So I want to invite you into this idea that you can just start learning to be real. So how do we do this? We start walking around and we have to develop a relationship for our own emotions because so many of us don't have a good relationship for our own emotions. We don't know how to be real with women. We don't know how to be honest with women. We don't know how to be honest with ourselves. We're in such denial. Or when we do get honest, we start feeling like the victim that I talked about earlier. So you're going to do this every day for 15 minutes. Just take a walk, walk down the street and to walk through your house and just start connecting with things. And I know that sounds super hippy dippy, but I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. You're going to look at something and you're going to ask yourself, how does it make you feel? Like if you had two paintings right in front of you, one was red, one was blue. Could you look at one with your prefrontal cortex? That's right here. I'm going to look at it and then I'm going to focus in on it just like I do a camera. Okay. And if I go too wide, I'm not going to feel much. If I go too narrow, I'm not going to feel anything either because I'll be pushing. And there's that sweet spot right in between where it's almost like you create this space between you and the object you're looking at. And so as I look at the camera right now, I can focus in really intensely and I can really want to convey my message to you. That's focusing too much. Like, listen to me, you've got to hear this. And there's a want in that and I'm pushing on you. And then there's going back like hippy dippy like the old me and i go really wide and i'm feeling back here and there's a sense i i'm, I'm like even if i sit up here i'm stoned hey man how you doing and what's up you know how's your day going and then and there's no real focus or in, in your day well there's the happy medium between those two where i find this sweet spot and this is like laying the laying the wiring to what you want to feel so now i look at the blue painting and i connect and then I relax enough so that I have what I would call a conduit tension between me and the thing I'm looking at. I'm looking right at it. I create tension with it. I relax enough so that I can start to feel how my body responds to that. There's a sense that that, that color blue is coming to me. And I'm not saying this is actually happening. You can decide if it is. There's a sense that it's coming to me and I'm getting a feeling in my body. And I'll get a feeling maybe in my throat or I'll get a feeling in my chest or my stomach. And I just relax into that. I ask this area to open. I ask this area to open and I say, how does that blue make me feel? And I let it in and just say, can I let this in? Can I let it in a little more? Can I open my heart a little more? How does it make me feel? And what you're going to notice is you'll have specific sensations, maybe emotions. Maybe you'll feel joy or sadness or happiness. But if you even go a layer deeper, you might feel a sense of relaxation in your heart. You might feel a sadness or a tightening. You might feel heaviness. Your gut might tighten. Your gut might loosen. What you're going to notice is you have super subtle sensations happening all through your body in response to pretty much anything you look at, not just art. Art just has a bigger effect. Um, nature has a bigger effect. Looking at that tree and I'm looking at it in the camera and I can open my heart to it and I can let the tree and the tree actually causes me to really relax. It causes my brain to stop a little bit. There's a sense this slows down. There's a sense this relaxes, micro relaxations through here and through here. And there's a sense that I can relax with the tree, you know, and it makes sense. Trees give us oxygen. So, and they nurture us and they calm us. That's why we love walking through the woods. Um, I could also look at a coffee cup. Like I have a coffee cup that totally relaxes me as a picture of my dog on it that, that passed away a few years ago, about a year ago. And I love looking at that coffee cup, but there's also things that'll make you feel heavy or sad. There's things that'll make you feel angry and you'll feel just a twinge. It might be 1% of that energy. And that's what you want to notice. How do these different things make you feel? So what I did for a while was I would walk around and I would do this with anything and everything. I take a 15 minute walk every day specifically to feel things. And I might take in the camera. How does the camera make me feel? I might take in uh, an animal walk by a dog and I'll just feel the dog. How does the dog make me feel? And two different dogs, how do they make me feel? I might take in perspective, something close, something far away. How do they feel different? Because that, that's going back and forth between two things is gonna feel different. 
And then the next thing I'll do is I'll, I'll start to listen to sounds. How do the sounds make me feel? A certain song, maybe rock music versus classical, or maybe rap versus rock, or maybe it's just a, the birds in the background, you know, uh, a car driving by. Uh, a Harley roaring by, you know, how do they make me feel? Look at the Harley and listen to the Harley and then open, create that conduit, and how does that make you feel? What this will do is start to develop a lot of emotional sensitivity. Some of you that are, have this developed already a little bit, nice guys, will feel it right away. And your job when you feel it right away is not to become reactive to it. Feel it, but don't be, get all tense, don't bind up, because there's a sense sometimes like you hear that Harley come by and you might feel your body tighten a little bit. And then you want to do is practice relaxing so you can keep feeling it. And uh, you might hear a certain type of music you don't like and tighten. You might feel another type of music and loosen. And what I want you to do is be proactive with whatever you feel. I'm going to feel it and let it run through my body. I'm just like I'm a, a grounding rod. I let it in and then I let it ground. That's, that's feeling the legs. Okay. And that's the process. You just do that every day. Take a walk. Feel something, as soon as you tighten, do a little releasing if you know how to release, let go, relax the body again, until you can really be with that object and do the next object. What you'll find is that every object is gonna cause different sensations, different thoughts, different memories, different feelings to come up and you're gonna start to become conscious of those. It might take a few weeks, but it's gonna start to happen. Also, you're gonna find that often in the morning when you're really numbed out or shut off, you just woke up, you're not quite there, it's not gonna really work in the beginning. Because until you get the conduit hooking up to the item, this, this sense that I can focus on it and, and relax a little bit through here, you're not gonna feel much. But there'll be this point, if you keep going, it might be 10 minutes in, where suddenly, oh, whoa, I can start to feel stuff now. For those of you that are really walled off it, that say, I don't feel anything, I don't know what he's talking about, it might take weeks. Because I've had a lot of clients like that when they first come in and we start releasing and learning to feel and developing your emotional relationship, your emotional intelligence, which is what this is gonna do. They can't feel anything at first. They're terrible at it. And they're like, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. And they have to just keep practicing, relaxing 1% of the time until they start to feel. And I talk a lot about the 1% rule. Um, and then it starts to change. So for me, I did this, I could already feel a lot. And when I started doing this, this changed everything. I could already feel a lot in general, but then I started walking around and I started specifically connecting to items and feeling them every day. And three weeks in, oh my God, was there a shift. Suddenly I was getting reads and memories and feelings and stories about all kinds of stuff coming off of different objects, items, sounds. So I was creating a literal connection with the world and I was starting to relax. What I found was in the mornings, even though I could feel a lot, I would often have a lot of walls. Or when I went out to meet girls, I had a lot of walls. And I had to let those walls go in order to be able to connect to the women. And so I'd go out and I'd work to get those walls down and then I'd start, my emotional intelligence would kick on because then I could start to let everything in. I could start to feel it and relate to it. But there was this little grumpy me that was between me and a lot of those walls. The more I did this every day, the more that wall got thinner and thinner. And pretty soon I could just walk right out the door almost and welcome and start feeling things. It was amazing. What else did this do? This was really interesting. I started to have conversations with women and they started to get more powerful, stronger. I would be sitting there talking to a girl and suddenly I could feel, and, and this would happen before when I was in state, but this started to happen all the time now. Just listen to the barista and I could feel so much emotion in her voice. I could feel much more sensitivity. And suddenly I had things I wanted to say back, questions I wanted to ask. My conversations got way better. And suddenly, because I could feel her so much, I could feel a little, where she was at emotionally, what was going on inside of her. I was getting impressions inside myself, almost like little reads. It was really easy to hold conversations. Curiosity became super powerful because this naturally builds curiosity. If you spend three or four weeks looking at items, just feeling them, you start to have, get questions in your mind. Well, how did that end up like that? Why, what caused that tree to grow like that? What, is, who, what was the inspiration behind this painting? And then you start to get these questions about people. So in the middle of a conversation, you start to feel this like burning sensitivity inside yourself. And it was really interesting. This, this, this like, this like you're sitting there and you're talking. I don't know if burning sensitivity is the right word, but a sensitivity inside yourself, and you just get ideas. Like I ask about this, or you might interrupt her just at the right time and say, you know what? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Tell me more about that. That's really interesting. Or why? And then suddenly they want to tell you everything. They, people want to talk to you more, and it starts happening with everybody because you're getting more sensitive. So if you really want this to kick in, 
and you really want this to work, commit to a minimum of three weeks, and I would say even four, and start to notice what happens. Start to relax more and more. If you want to amplify it a lot, I would say do it in conjunction with my video on the, uh, the body scan meditation. Learn to feel your whole body, learn to get it to relax, and then go out and do this every day. Put those two together and you will have a winner. Uh, now there's one more step to this that I haven't shared yet that even amplifies it more and I call them the vulnerability walks. There's the heart walks and the vulnerability walks. And I wanna see what you guys do with this. If you guys really like this and you really start to do it well, walking around feeling everything and then feeling people as they walk by and, and, and you're gonna notice that people are a little bit different. That's where the vulnerability walks come in. How you do this specifically with people every day to develop even more powerful connection with strangers. Um, then what I want you to do is I want you to comment below uh, how you're doing with this. If you comment and you give me and, and I start to see what's going on, then uh, then we're going to go next. I want to make sure you're doing this. Then next we'll go into the vulnerability walks and we'll start to dig deeper into that. Um, and so uh, with that said, hopefully you get a lot out of this. Definitely comment. This is this is uh, this stuff can change your conversation skills without even learning oh i gotta say this to a girl when she says this i gotta learn to say that to a girl when she says that you'll start to become more naturalized with stuff like this and it's not hippy dippy we have mirror neurons that cause us to react to people's subtlest subtlest uh micro expressions we have the ability to feel so much that's why our our face is filled with micro expressions 93 percent of our communication is non-verbal this is not hippy dippy we feel joy and happiness through here we feel turn on down here the body is built to do this this is science we get the gut brain look it up gut is a second brain this is powerful stuff and as you develop this relationship with the body more and more it's going to become you're going to become that much more potent and you won't even have to come up with special tricks and techniques to draw a woman in doesn't mean you can't use them if you love them to start to learn specific things to say and ways to say them but those things will only be amplified by your ability to feel okay so uh make sure to like this video if you liked it make sure to share it with people that need it there's a lot of people that need this out there make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed and comment 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 i want to hear more because i want to keep going in this direction and develop more of this for you guys and uh, I think that's it. Remember, only the confident really live. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.